Hey everyone, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Uh, I believe this is the 10th episode, meaning that this is now my longest running series. Morrowind died after five, uh, and... Uh, uh, Lord. Throw in a second crap. Jiminy Christmas, sorry, I totally forgot that. Um, that, uh, didn't go many places. I mean, it got a season. It it did what I wanted out of it. Um, and I'll bring it back if I want to. Um, yeah, and it looks like this will persist after... Uh, probably after Halo Reach. Just because there's a lot more in this game. At the very least, it'll be longer than Halo Reach. I think Halo Reach is only like... Um, it's probably only going to be 10 episodes when I finish recording everything. So, uh, yeah. All right. I came back right where I said I would. We are, yeah, cool. That's uh, that's how it be. You're fighting a fruit golem. This is a golem made of fruit. That's why they call it a fruit golem. They don't call it a fruity golem because they don't like internal bleeding. Gets the jump on you and it pelts you with a barrage of apples. Looks like a doctor and that, <laughs> I have dyslexia. Looks like an apple today keeps a doctor in business. He does not hit points. Flip it. Wow, shit. Knob Goblin Mutant. This is a failed genetic experiment by the Knob Goblin Mad Scientists. Flip it. Are you really just... You're finding a basic elemental. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. 10, print, you're gonna die, puny adventure. 20, go to 10. <laughs> oh, man. I hope Kate's watching. I think they're probably the only person I know who might appreciate a programming joke. Maybe Robert, right? Input, what is your name? Username, dollar sign, uh, semicolon, print, sizable soup con of pain, semicolon, username, dollar sign, critical hit. You lose eight hit points. Bip him. Nice. Knob Goblin Mutant. Uh... It gets into a long argument about it, with itself about what the best way to attack would be. Since you're getting a running commentary, it's easy to dodge the attack until the mutant runs out of energy. Cool. Uh, this isn't doing so bad. Like, we're actually a decent level for this. <laughs> the basic elemental tries to punch you in the kidney, but it gets stuck in an infinite loop and can't proceed. Oh, that's funny. That's pretty good. You drop your severed flipper on your nipple. It tosses a banana peel on the floor and then knocks you down on top of it. That's not the way it usually goes. Oh, we're good, though. Um, let's pop off here. And let's... Um, let's craft. That's what I was going to do. Because I've got an oronge now. And I'm out of vodka. So I can't do anything here. Well, I know what I'll do. I'll just go to the big mountains. Barrel full of barrels. I don't think this is a great way to go about it. Great for schnauz, moxie weed, fine wine. Because we get three drops for no uh, environment or for no upgrade stuff. Great for schnapps. Great for schnapps. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to the bar. Wait, no, it's the f forest, right? Simple tavern. Drop alcohol, you bastards. Can we actually can I actually get alcohol from this? Hey Dusky Offer, welcome back. Thanks for taking care of that rat problem. I'll tell you though, ever since I fa fired Luann, so all I can do to keep this place mon uh, running, much less keep it clean. If you want to earn extra meat, I can always use help busting tables and mopping and emptying some tunes and whatnot. What do you say? I'm just here to drink, bro. What'll it be? Eh, I don't really need these. I'll buy one though. Doop 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 doop. Hey 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 hey. Degrassi no. Oh right, this is a whole different thing. The garage. You're finding a guard bugbear. This is a bugbear kept by the knolls of Degrassi Knoll as a garden and pet. You get the jump on it. Bip him. You get a bugbear beanie. You're finding a knollish tire juggler. This is a knoll who wanders Degrassi Knoll, juggling enormous tires. No one knows why. We got tires. 
finding a Nolas gearhead. There's a Nolas gearhead when he's not fixing up hot rods in the grass, you know, garages. He's wandering around looking for a fight, such as the one he just found. Get the jump on him. Cool. Tries to whip you with its skinny little arms, but it's like getting whipped with a noodle. With a wet noodle, sorry. Tara Juggler. Wow! Hell yeah! Uh, let's actually go to Seaside Town and let's take a look at the janitor. Olaf. Have you found the meat car parts? Do you have them? Uh, going to use meat paste to stick them all together. If you're not a warrior, it's not a complicated device. Uh... Current quests. Okay, council quests. Me and my nemesis. Dressed like a clown. The car is made of meat. Find some parts. Eh, I don't really feel like doing that right right now. The pretty good escape. Oh, we could go finish off Lady Spooky Raven again. I was a little grinding there, but it wasn't too bad. Stairs up. Lady Spooky Raven. Oh, there's another stairs up. I'm sorry to bother you, but while my business is in this realm is fi finished, I find myself attached to it. For pleasure. You start to back away. It's not like that. I just, I just want to dance one last time, but I can't not dress like this. You squint, peer through her, and raise an eyebrow. I want to look different to myself than I do to you, and believe me, I look a mess. It just wouldn't do to be seen. You clear your throat. I mean, I wouldn't be caught dead. You clear your throat again. Please... Be kind to me for once in your life and retrieve my dancing finery. She explains she'll need a powder puff from the bathroom, ball ground from the bedroom, and her shoes, which she thinks she left inside a painting in the gallery, though she didn't hallucinate what she meant by that. All right, cool. We have now unlocked the next leg of the quest. So we can go do these. On a gallery. You're finding a guy with a pitchfork and his wife. Oh, it's American Gothic, that painting I hate. <laughs> You walk into the center of the gallery and hear an impatient throat-clearing sound from behind you. You wheel around and see an old man with a pitchfork standing next to a plain, stern-looking woman. It must have come out of the, one of the paintings. I reckon you want to get off my property, says the man as he levels his pitchfork at you, and they begin to slowly advance towards you. Jump him. Cool. Lights out in the gallery. As you look through the paintings in the gallery, you look through the paintings in the gallery, each one weirder than the last. You don't know art, but you know what you like, and right now you'd like to be looking at something a little less disturbing. As you gaze at a weird painting of a guy in a bowler hat who is apparently holding a giant green apple with his mouth, a giant clock somewhere begins to strike the hour. It must have an enormous bell, for each peal of it makes all the paintings on the walls vibrate, and the sculptures shimmy on their pedestals until you're afraid they'll crash to the ground. The clock strikes 13, and the lights go out. You're keenly aware of the creepy paintings watching in the dark. Let's check out the paint splattered painting. You stand in front of a painting that, especially in this dim light, you can't make heads nor tails of. It looks like someone put the canvas on the ground and splattered paint on it and broken glass and some sand. Was that blood? You thought I was boring. A spectral voice whispers in your ear. That painting is by the inimitable master, Pulse and Jackish. Notice the artist's rage and intensity practically scream from these lines of splattered and drip paint oh no wait i'm terribly sorry this is the drop cloth used when lady spooky raven had her bedroom uh, repainted still it's vibrant don't you think with that the lights come back on you spin around bewildered but you can't find the source of the voice hey just for the record i hate jackson pollock i think he's a complete jackass is he dead let me google that I have to Google one hand because I'm using the other one to hold my microphone because I don't feel like um, squishing myself into the side of my chair. Jackson Pollock. Oh, good. He's dead. I'm glad. Why are they so paying? Yeah, the value of his work was driven up by commodification. Fuck Jackson Pollock. He's complete jackass. Ooh, it's art. Go to hell. You know? I know that, like, it's now so old of an opinion that it's wrapped around to being new and fresh. 
and that it's kind of a boomer opinion to be like, ooh, Jackson Pollock is not an artist. No. They're right. Jackson Pollock's full of shit. He tricked people into thinking he had talent. You know? He's a con man. And occasionally, I think he did paint real things, but those didn't sell. So we went back to just throwing shit at a canvas. In some cases, literally. <sighs> Fuck Jackson Pollock. You're fighting an empty suit of armor. You hear a creaking sound coming from behind you, and you turn around to see an empty suit of armor step down from its pedestal between two paintings. It pauses to grab an ancient shield and spear from the wall behind it, and advances on you, malice in where its eyes would be if it had eyes. I love that. I, I really love the way that this game writes dialogue. It's very much how I handle dialogue. Flip it. Uh, sorry, one of my eyes is itching. You're fighting a cubist bull. As you walk through the heart, a haunted gallery, you hear a muffled snort behind you. you. Turn around and see one of the hardest to look at things you've ever seen. It's obviously supposed to be a bull, but it looks like a bull would look... It looks like if... But it looks like a bull would look if your eyes were in two different rooms while you're looking at it. It scrapes to the ground with a single misshapen hoof and cha charges in a direction that's either straight towards you or perpendicular to straight towards you. You can't tell. It's the jump on you. The bull simultaneously gores you in the elbow with one horn and in the nipple with the other, somehow. By the way, any hit location is randomized. Um, it's just totally, totally random. Which is why nipple keeps showing up. It's It doesn't have any real like thing going on. Desmond gained a pound. That's a 14-pound mosquito. That's heavier than like a baby. Like a newborn baby. That's like two newborn babies. Fat babies, too. Ancient Greaves. Louvre it or leave it. You wander deeper into the gallery and find yourself at a dead end, standing in front of a large black and white lithograph that depicts what can only be described of as an explosion in a stairway factory. Stairs crisscross the space at impossible angles, cunningly drawn to seem as almost photorealistic while maintaining an agree a degree of optical illusion that makes your eyes cross. Someone has placed a small set of drip steps at the base of the drawing, as though inviting you to step into it for a quick trip to migraine headache land. Enter it. <laughs> you step into the drawing and glance around you. Ever hear the expression, too many cooks spoil the broth? This looks like a case of too many architects. Maybe Home Depot had a big staircase cell or something. Turn around looking for where you enter this hell maze, and you aren't in the least surprised to find the way back to the gallery has vanished without a trace. Uh, another fine mess you've gotten yourself into. You stop for a moment, and as some large knobbly wheel rolls past you, as you watch it unrolls into some giant lizard slash centipede and walks to the doorway. Try to catch up to it, but it's already vanished. We'll go sideways. Walk through an archway and emerge at a different one at the opposite end of the stairway. Step up the stairs and through a doorway, which leads into a bleak desert landscape. You have to walk for it through a moment looking for any landscapes or features when suddenly there's a splash. Ugh, you've, you appear to have stepped in a puddle of clock. You look around and see more of them, one drooping around the branch of a dead tree, one slowly dripping down the side of a perfectly square rock. Nearby, a team of ants are busily subduing a pocket watch. You decide to turn around and head back to the stairway before it starts to rain swatches or something. Um, Salvador Dali, right? One of the like great dudes who had a lot of surreal art um he's cool that guy is an artist who's not full of shit uh he did not use drugs to make his weird art what he would do is he would eat a bunch of food before uh before bedtime uh especially like spicy foods like a like a stinky cheese or like hot sauce or something just stuff that's gonna like make your dreams weird and then he would go to sleep in a chair and hold a pocket watch in his hand so, you know, he would keep hold on the pocket watch, but when he fell asleep, he would, you know, start to drift and his fingers would slacken and he'd drop the watch on the floor and it would make a loud noise. And so he would jolt, he would be jolted awake in like a, in a, in a rush of like, oh, fuck, what's happening? And so he would get this weird like blend of reality and dream and it's why his stuff was so weird. Um, also, this is another true Salvador Dali fact. He had a brother who died a couple of years, uh, a couple of months before he was born. It was one of those things where like they, uh, they like really rushed out the next kid and his parents 
explain to him that like, yes, you technically had a brother who died before you were born, but you're actually his reincarnation. And they explained to Salvador Dali, baby Salvador Dali, that he was the reincarnation of his dead brother. This is a true fact. You can look this up. Um, they explained to Dali that he was the reincarnation of his dead brother. And Dali believed them for a long time. And like they would go to like the brother's grave and they'd be like, that's your old body in there. You know, that's your brother. He died and now he's you. Salvador Dali is a weird dude. Like if you get into it, that's a weird, that's a whole fucking thing. Anyway, Salvador Dali's dope. Um, let's take the stairs left. You hold the handrail tightly in case gravity gives out and carefully traverse the station. You step off the stairs and through a doorway, which leads to the bank of a lake. Several angels and assorted spec angels and assorted spectangers are standing around expectantly. What's up? You ask. <laughs> We're waiting for Venus says one of the angels. We tied her in a straitjacket, wrapped her in chains, and locked her in a giant scallop. Then we dumped her in this lake. That's pretty heavy. Did she owe you a lot of money or something? What? No, no, it's a, it's a performance. She's an escape artist. Just then, a giant scallop breaks to the surface of the lake with a splash and swings open to review a, a reveal a beautiful woman draped only in her long red hair. The crowd cheers and throws flowers, and she takes a bow as someone throws a towel around her shoulders. You applaud politely and head back down the stairway. Um, that's both a reference to Houdini's escape stuff and the birth of Venus, that ancient uh, fucking fresco. Let's go south. You step up the stairs into a courtyard where three soldiers are holding, swearing some kind of oath to a bearded guy holding three swords. No wonder they're loyal to him. Most guys can only hold one sword. After the ceremony is done, you follow the guy around and take some notes about how to be better at holding a lot of swords at the same time. Sword holder. You deal damage if you're holding more weapons at the same time. Like, maybe 50% more weapons. You deal 50% more weapon damage. Shit, man. Cubist bull. Nice. Oh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to burn... Oh, yeah. I just want to... Oh, yeah. End of the drawing again. It was fun. Okay, what did we do last time? Um, let's go north. The stairs disappear before you start climbing, but you discover you're already wherever you wanted to go anyway. You step off the stairs and through a doorway, which leads to a dark stone-walled room. A bearded man in a white toga is speaking to a small group of people, gesturing animatedly. So I said, that was no lady, that was my wife. The listeners groan, some of them putting their heads to their hands in pain. Oh, come on. That's a classic. Oh, okay, okay. So there's this traveling salesman who sees this three-legged pig. You sneak past them and towards another door, which seems to lead to another set of stairs. As you leave, you hear the man saying, Wow, this is the worst cup of coffee I've ever tasted. What's in this, anyway? That's a reference to a comedian I don't know. Um, Is he being poisoned? Damn, I wonder what that is. Let's go up. <laughs> the stairs have become a ladder halfway up and well it takes a while for you to get your legs disentangled but you eventually reach the top you step off the stairs and through a doorway and find yourself in someone else's bedroom someone whose sense of perspective is evidently a bit skewed or perhaps it was the architect's fault and the occupant just had years to get used to it you climb uphill to the head of the massive and bright orange bed and s inspect the awkwardly slanted nightstand you pocket a bottle you find on it and decide to leave before you get a headache. You exit through the door you came through and find yourself back in the gallery. You find a bottle of Van Gogh Batussin. <laughs> That's funny. Let's take a look at that. Van Gogh Batussin. That is purest platinum. It's the sniffing, sneezing, coughing, aching, cut off your ear to give to a prostitute medicine. It's good for what ails you, so long as that doesn't include a severed ear. Restores a whole bunch of everything and makes you feel weird. I'm going to hold on to that, because that's kick ass. <laughs> so fucking great. 
<laughs> oh, that's really funny. Um, so we can also go to the other parts of Spooky Raven Manor. Um, stairs up. You can go to the haunted bathroom. You're finding a clawfoot bathtub. As you enter the haunted bathroom, the bathtub rears up on its back feet and charges at you. You get a jump on it. 102 plus 8 damage. You get a battle of Monsieur Bubble and fancy bath salts. Ooh, let's go take a look at those. Monsieur Bubble. This is a bottle of fancy French bubble bath. You're not sure what makes bubbles fancier or more French than others, but there you go. Uh, MP sells for 40 meat. Cool. What else do we get? Um, bath salts. Fancy. It would be great if I wasn't blind. Here we go. Fancy bath salts. This is a fancy glass container full of fancy bath salts. They're for dissolving into a... <laughs> they're for dissolving into a bath if you're not feeling fancy enough. I suppose you could also dissolve them into your washing machine if your pants weren't fancy enough for you. Weakens enemies very slightly. What do rat whiskers do? I've got 26 of them. Just open another tab here. <laughs> uh, rat. Rar. Rat whisker. Yeah, I'm just doing this live. Um, Originally tradable. Hence some players. Oh, you can sell them to the... Interesting. Okay, cool. I'll go do that. Um, Just because I got a shitload in my pocket and not really doing anything. And I'm going to paint your portrait. Ooh, is that a rat whisker? I use those to prepare my paintbrushes. I'll give you 50 meat each. That's not bad. I won't say no to that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. All right. Now what? Oh, God. Please. Okay. Um, hmm. We can also go here to the Cops of the Deep Fat Fires because there's uh, a lot of stuff in Lady Spooky Raven's Manor. We can also go back to the Curped, Dark Neck of the Woods. Dodeca Dorific. Dodeca Hedorific. You find a small clearing in the Dark Neck of the Woods. In the middle of the clearing, hiding in plain spite, is a dodecagram. This must be the artifact the imp was talking about, and it must also be one of the components for the friar's ritual. You grab it, feeling only slightly guilty at dooming the imp's strike effort. I mean, it's not like they'd refrain from torching you from all eternity just because you helped them out. Cool. Um, Dark heart and dark elbow. All right. You're fighting a fallen archfiend. This thing used to be an archfiend until it in its, failed in its evil duties and it was cast down. They're up. Let's call it sideways. It tries to stuff you full of fattening food, but you're not a member of the fast food nation. Oh, it's... Is it a Ronald? Is it a Ronald McDonald? Nice. I guess, um... Because clowns are, are fiends, right? Pink slime. Yep, that's a, that's a Ronald. This is an outrage for some reason, says the description. P. Imp. Nice. Critical hit. Heavy duty bendy straw. It's a quest item. This is a bendy straw made extra thick to withstand the extreme temperatures of Hades. Quest. Oh, for this. Right, right, right. For Dakota Fanning. And then we need the Dungeoneers Association and the Haunted Conservatory, but that's okay. Moon over the dark heart. As you search the dark heart of the woods, you're somewhere in the dark left ventricle at the moment. You almost trip over a little imp who is carrying a plate of hot wings. Hey, watch where you're going, you big undamned galoot. He shouts. Sorry, you say. Where are you going with those wings? I'm having a party with my fellow imps at our secret treasure stash. He says, we just stole something from those tubby fires and I can't wait to show it off. Uh, I'll bet you didn't really steal it from the fires. Prove it, you say craftily. No way, loser, the imp says, and leaps away, dropping the plate of wings. He pauses just long enough to moon you before vanishing into the bush. 
Well, it appears you've reached an impasse. An imp ass. <laughs> God. <laughs> an impasse. And uh, I'm reeling from that. That's one of those puns that like hits you in the nads and just you've got to sit with it. You know, you got to roll it around in your teeth. The wings got all dirty when he dropped them, but the plate looks interesting. You pocket it. Eh, you sack it because it's too big to pocket. G imp. Oh, boy. This is an imp dressed entirely in black leather bondage gear. He giggles in a way you're not entirely comfortable with. With which you're not entirely comfortable. You get the jump on him. The hell out of here. You drop your severed flipper on your groin. He, saw, he calls forth an army of call girl imps who batter their wings and skeeve you out with their skankiness. <laughs> impale. Oh, impale. Oh, my God. Straight from the finest brewery in Hades, Imp Ale delivers full-bodied flavor, eternal damnation, and just a touch of hops. Nice. Pimp. Hot wing and Imp Ale. Uh, this is a delicious hot wing. It's hot and, uh, yeah, I got nothing. All right, cool. It's, uh, all right, fine with that. G Imp. He tries to paddle you with a leather paddle, but you demur. Running the load, you find a trail of hot wing sauce on the ground and follow it to a hole at the bottom of a huge hollow tree. As you step inside, you find two breathtaking things. The first, that you're standing in a giant, gigantic imp load. Implode. Ugh, every time. A huge treasure cache filled with meat rare items and even hard to get familiar larvae. The second breathtaking thing is that the, inch, the imp that just punched you in the stomach. Hey, undamned one, he says. Imps only. Now that you know where this is, we have to send it back to Hades. He holds up his hands, and you see he's holding a box of birthday candles. He makes a complicated gesture with both hands, and reality starts to warp. The imp load starts to collapse, and on his, it's imploding. Oh, he uh, folding out of this dimension. You manage to snag some meat before it vanishes entirely, but soon you're left standing in a little clearing where the imp load was. Even worse, the imp with the birthday candles is nowhere to be seen. Fall on Archfiend. Oh, arches, like golden arches, and he's got the M. And then also fallen arch, like fallen arches, like the, the, the thing. We got demon skin. This is the skin from a demon. There are a number of adjectives you could use to describe it. Among those number are thick, tough, leathery, red, and warm. Those adjectives are also among the adjectives you could use to describe a grizzled but friendly old communist. <laughs> Thick, tough, leathery, red, and warm. That's you, Kate. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. He glares at you and his arches glow a bright gold. Now you will see my true... My true... Oh. The fiend clutches his right arm and shouts, I'm coming, Elizabeth! And falls down. That's a weird reference to me, because um, I recognize it as the quote that Donkey says in uh, uh, Shrek. Jeez, yeah, Donkey from Shrek, as opposed to, you know, Donkey from Cisco. Uh, and I assume that it's a reference to someone having a stroke. All right, what is this? Calling Elizabeth... Stanford. Elizabeth G. Stanford from Stanford and Son. Okay. Or Sanford. <laughs> All right. It's from Sanford and Son. Now, I'm a kid that watched Shrek. Was I supposed to get that Sanford and Son reference? You know, that, that reference to a show that was, like, what, six times older than I was when I saw Shrek? It's one of those things. I kind of hate, like, adult humor like that, where they just sneak that into a kid's show, because, like, who the hell would know? Whatever. Uh, I kick his ass. P. Imp. 
He tries to gore you with his horns, but he finds it too hard to hit you. It's hard out here for a pimp. Let's bonk you. He tries to belly bounce you, but you avoid its jelly belly. Yeah, we do it. Infernal insoles. Yeah, like fallen arches. This is a set of springy pads that go inside your shoes. They're sure to put <laughs> a spring in your step and the fires of Hades here into your black, black heart. Uh, slight heat resistance and combat initiative. I don't really need combat initiative, but that's okay. Thank you. Anyway. I, Martin. You encounter a G imp reclining against a tree. He looks at you and mutters something through his mask. I can't understand you, you say. He emits some more muffled grunts, then points to a clock on the tree behind him, then points to a martini in the hand he isn't pointing with. I see, you say. You're trying to say that you're on your lunch break, so instead of attacking me, you're resting with a, fresh, a refreshing martini. Uh, but you're unable to drink the martini through the mask, so instead you're going to give it to me. Am I getting this right? He nods, hands you the martini, and wanders into the forest. All right. That's, that's perfectly fine. Cool. P.M.P. G.M.P. He tries to gag you with a ball gag, but you're not having any of that funny business. I thought this was a family game. I'm uh, I'm beginning to notice that I'm kind of just running around and grinding. Oh, here we go. Imp we nimble, impy quick. You know, that's the trick, you know? I just have to explain to it. I have to complain, in fact. You finally catch up to the candle-carrying imp, who is presumably a card-carrying imp as well, and snatch the candles out of his greedy little talon. Hey, he says, those are mine. If some imp told you that, the imp lied. Implied. Ugh. Normally, puns don't get me, but these are kicking my white butt. These are... Oh, they're so bad. <laughs> these belong to the deep fat fires, and I'm taking them back. No little minion is going to get... Uh, is going to keep me from whatever awesome reward I'm sure to get for finishing this quest. You take the candles and get out of the dark heart of the wood before the next attack. Oh, of course, it's a dark heart of the wood, so you get the heart attack. Uh, dark elbow. It's the only way to be sure. Peering around a tree, you spot a wimp in the process of doing something to his mouth. Curious, you approach him. Ah, don't hurt me, he shrieks, spotting you. Calm down, I'm just wondering what you're doing here. What? I'm just putting on some lip balm. What? You mean like nuke your face from orbit? No, balm. To keep my lips from getting all sore and chapped in the sweltering heat of Hades. Here, just take it. Just leave me alone. He runs away, leaving you with the tube. Uh, might come in handy if you can keep from wondering where the wimp's been, lips have been. Um, the, It's the only way to be sure. I'm pretty sure that's a quote from Aliens. It's been a while since I've seen Aliens. I keep meaning to rewatch it, though, because... Um, Alien and Aliens are the source of the survival horror and subsequently action horror genre. The curse of all survival horror games is that they inevitably either stop existing or they become action horror. This is a tube of the lip balm used by demons to protect their lips from the intense heat of Hades. Fireproof lips, sublime hot resistance, plus nine. Interesting. Actually, let's just go right back to the elbow. Gimp. I hope enough. I hope I have enough adventures to just finish this out. Deep impact. Oh, deep impact. Oh! You tiptoe through the threatening underbrush of the dark elbow of the woods, leaving no stone unturned or turn on stone as you search for the fire's lost artifact. You're looking so hard, in fact, you almost trip over a little lit imp. Lit imp. Oh man, sitting by the side of the path. He's holding out a little wooden cup. Uh, and contriving to look as pathetic as possible. Hey there, governor, he says. Spare a few meat for a down on his luck imp. I can't walk since I both broke broke the both legs in one of Satan's infernal sack races. You reach into your wallet and then stop. Wait a minute, you say. I'm wise to your impact, and it shall have no impact on me. I've seen plenty of imps trying to make an honest living by beating the stuffing out of their ventures. Anyway, I don't have time for this. I'm looking for some magical artifacts and tubby losers lost in here. Oh, I know what you're looking for. I'll tell you who took it and give you some of my input if you just use this tree branch to scratch inside of my cast for me. The itching driving me crazy. You agree to the dark creature's nefarious terms, and he tells you his, one of his fellow imps, an artist by trade, stole the artifact. You thank the limp, pocket the imp ales, and head off to look for an imp in a beret. <laughs> All right. 
La Imp. This imp doesn't appear to be in very good shape, unless you consider shape like something with two broken legs a good shape. He gets the jump on you. He tries to poke you with his horns, but he moves so slowly it's easy to dodge. I feel bad about this. I'm just beating these guys up. G imp. Bondage gear. Got a hot wing and a leather mask. Oh, I did not want to see that. Oh, I hope the stats aren't good. I mean, this is an epic drop, right? Okay, it's not as good. Moxie minus three and muscle plus one. That isn't. This is a <laughs> this is a leather mask switches. Actually, I'd rather not describe this item at all. You and me both, bro. You're fighting a demon ninja. A big red ninja with a horn stands before you. I am the demon ninja, he says. Allow me to demonstrate the myriad ways in which I can whoop your ass. He gets the jump on you. He demonstrates oh my god. Demonstrates. Ugh. He demonstrates how hard it is to see some to, to see to hit someone when you're wearing a ninja mask. We bonk him. He demonstrates the ineffective nature of a poorly aimed karate chop. Nice. Impart some wisdom. Oh, impart some Oh God, I'm gonna kill myself. No, I'm not. I'm too curious about the future. Uh I think I recorded that reach episode before this i think these are coming out in the wrong order though so if everyone's watching everything that i post it'll make sense maybe you step into a clearing and see an imp in a beret sculpting a giant replica satan out of a block of butter yes the dark lord will be pleased by this likeness i've rendered like rendered fat and he'll be doubly pleased when i feed it to a bunch of lactose intolerant damn souls how fortunate i was to steal this butter knife from those stupid friars aha you shout leaping to the clearing Impart that knife, impart unto me that knife, impartist. Unfortunately, the little jerk squeals, grips the knife tightly, and runs away on his stubby little imp legs before you can catch him. You give chase, pausing only to limp like the sculpture. Mmm. Delicious, refreshing butter. Limp. He tries to smack you with a crutch, but he misses and falls over. We're running out of adventures. Oh, come on. Oh, I really want to find it. G imp. Oh man, we're so close. We got a vitamin G pill. Uh oh. Oh, what does this do? I never looked. Three hot damage and damages attacking opponent. Eh, that's okay. Oh, it's a shield though. It actually protects me. Eh, I don't really need a shield. Recent items. Uh oh. Impale. Pecking pockets like a G. Riboflavin by any other name would taste as sweet. Riboflavin. Picking pockets like a G. I have to try it. Riboflavin. With as much flavor as this gives you, you take what you want. Picking pockets like a G. I don't know what the hell that does. <laughs> Perhaps it just makes it so that I... Uh... Do more damage? Wait, I can just click this button. No, but I can't. I can click this button. Here we go. A secret, but not the secret you're looking for. You see a tree with some arcane symbols carved into the bark. Aha, you think. Surely this is a clue. Surely this will reveal the location of the eldritch implement I seek. Wishful thinking, though. Further investigation turns out nothing more than a cache of booze nestled in the tree's roots. Presumably stashed here by Brother Smothers at some point. Rum, vodka, and whiskey. Nice. Demon Ninja. He demonstrates the ineffectiveness of a poorly aimed roundhouse kick. I've only got five adventures. G Imp. We win the fight. Lee Imp. Oh, damn. I, I just... Ah, oh, I just noticed the, the thing that said pick his pockets. We got a cast, though. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Adventure again. Butter knife? I'll take the knife. Catch up to the imp artist. He tries to stab you with a butter knife, but since you aren't made of butter, are you? It has little effect. Hand it over, creep. I'm getting impatient, you shout. It's not funny, the imp says, glumly handing over the knife. Now I'll never finish my butter sculpture. 
oh well it would have melted in hades out of anyway maybe i'll just make satan a clay ashtray for his birthday grab the knife and get the hades out of dark elbow cool um hmm. Hmm. let's drink this oh cool it's full-bodied and tasty but you feel a little guilty about supporting the breweries of the damned it's only one drunkenness, so that means that I can safely drink another one, too. Oh, you lose stats. Oh, maybe it's not so good, then. That's okay. Because um, I got a little extra in the way of adventures. Which I... I just want to finish this, you know? Talk to the Deep. You've got all three of the ritual items, adventurer. Hurry to the center of the circle and perform the ritual. All right, you place the dodecagram on the ground at the center of the circle of stones. You light the box of candles and place them in a circle. You wave your eldritch butter knife to and fro. The infernal creatures who have tanned the friar's corpse stream back into the gate, hooting and shrieking. The deep fat fires approach you and speak, Thank you, adventurer. Clu truly you are a master of cleansing the taint. We'll be sure and let the council know that you've made good on their promise of help. You might be interested to know that Brother Marx has been trying to figure out where in Hades all these creatures came from. He checked out several tomes of arcane knowledge from the local library. You know, the one across the street from the sleazy back alley, and pulled through them until he found the solution. If only he had pulled a bit more quickly, we wouldn't owe the library thousands in fines. Uh, anyway, Brother Marx discovered that we'd open our portal directly above Hades' biggest cities, Pandemonium. It was recently named number one on Hades Weekly's Best Places to Be Eternally Damned list. All the downwardly mobile imps and demons live there, including Azazel, one of the Archdukes of Hades. Incidentally, one of the limps dropped a copy of Hades Weekly as he was leaving. The lead story says Azazel is missing some vitally important personal possessions. Somebody probably stole them. That's one of the hazards in uh, living with creatures of pure evil, you know. The article says he's offering a reward for their return. It's up to you if you want to get involved. We're going to stay, from Hades. We're going to stay the Hades away from this gate from now on. And listen, don't be a stranger. Drop by and, and visit us. Maybe get a blessing. We're good at blessings. We got Corsican. We got Brother Corsican, Brother Smothers, and Brother Flying Burrito. Welcome, friend. I am Brother Frying Burrito. Now that you've cleansed the tape from this cops, I can get back to my duties as a chief food gatherer for the Deep Fat Friars. Speaking of which, you look a bit hungry yourself. Care for a blessing? Blessed be. Uh, he smiles and rubs some ashes on your face. Brother Burrito's blessing. You've been blessed by Brother Flying Burrito and now share his Breeder natural ability to sniff out food wherever it may be. It's like being blessed by Toucan Sam, but in a much more general way. More meat drops from monsters. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, actually, that means that I can and should go back. Yeah. Huh? Sorry to trouble you, adventurer, but we've gotten a, shall we say, cryptic message from Black Angus. He's one of Loathing's minor nobles. It's usually safe to ignore him, but he sounded pretty agitated. And given the current political climate, we can scarcely afford to ignore him. Could you do us a favor and go to his tower in the Highlands? Oh, this area. Okay, so just read this word to yourself. And now I'll pronounce it. The word is orchasm. The Highlands are on the other side of the orchasm. We'll mark it on your map. Your name's Dusky Alpha, right? This came in the mail for you. You got a strange leaflet. Strange leaflet. You open the leaflet and things become less illustrated. Oh, this is a text adventure. Nice. Okay, I will actually do this later because uh, as far as I know, this won't require adventures and I can do this whenever. Of course, it also might, but who cares? Um, dope. Um, I guess I'll just kind of... I don't know. Haunted Conservatory. Oh, I can go to the, uh, uh, the Misspelled Cemetery. Read some old tombstones. Here lies Hattie Roth. Lost a duel versus a diaper changer. Here lies Merle the Knickerbocker Colt. Coat. Silly grandfather. Caught a combination of irritable bowel syndrome and dengue from a dirty crypt keeper. Here lies Electress Chartreuse Pontius Giles. 
Fishy roommate and lethargic mother killed by a stork. Nice. Yeah, let's just finish out here. You're fighting a grave robber, Zmobi. This is a grave robber who was killed by a Zmobi because he was stealing stuff from a grave. Then he became a Zmobi himself. He's really angry because he keeps trying to steal stuff from his own grave, which is obviously empty. All right. Your evilometer emits a single beep. Slightly less evil. Oh, damn. Tries to gnaw on your brains, but you're far too thick-headed. Cool. A corpulent zombie. This is this is a zombie who appears to have eaten a little too much brains. Or a few too brainy brains, if that's your thing. It gets the jump on you. Tries to belly bounce you, but it's moving so slowly you dodge. Cool. And we got cranberries. Uh, so off screen, I will just combine all my stuff together. Ugh. That's food, I guess. Ew. Um, off screen, I can combine all my stuff together. Uh, but that's the end of the episode because I've run out of adventures. Which is, you know, not a bad thing. Th six adventures, three muscle boundedness, and two drunkenness. Um, I meant to do that because I was out of adventures anyway. So this means that next time I will have more adventures. And next time we can play a little longer. But um, that's Kingdom of Loathing. Thanks for coming by to this slightly extra long episode. Um, it's not too, too long, considering I've done hour-long episodes in the past. But um, thanks for coming by. I had a really fun time. We finished up some quests, finally. Uh, we hit level nine. Oh, actually, before. Let's go buy the new shit. Smackdown. Yeah. Yeah. Tongue of the Walrus. And Seething of the Snow Leopard. All right. My skills. Tongue of the Walrus. This skill gives you the ability to lick your wounds, healing a bunch of hit points and making you feel less beaten up. That's cool. And seething of the Snow Leopard. Snow Leopards are always really mad. You probably didn't know this because they're also really difficult to see when they narrow their eyes. And narrowed eyes are a classic sign of feline anger. Additional bonus damage from Fury. Hell yeah. I pretty much always have Fury on me, so... And then, yeah, now I'm just, now I'm just based around Fury. That's, hell yeah, that's dope. All right, cool. Didn't even finish up my meat. Which means that by the time I finally get to level 10, I think, I will be able to get these. Oh, yeah. Um, next time, we will be able to go through all of these. We're doing a little more of each, um, but something we're actually going to be able to do is tomorrow, I think we're going to be able to take on those dire seals. I'm going to check just right now, because if we can, then yeah, okay. Um, that's the episode then. Thanks for coming by. I had a really fun time recording this episode. I had a lot of fun recording the last one as well. Uh, I'm coming back into recording Kingdom of Loathing. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And now that I'm not dealing with Morrowind, I'm a lot happier. I do want to record more when I will come back to it, I promise. But right now it's going to be KOL and Reach for a little while. And also, perhaps the secret third thing that I actually haven't recorded yet. But I will. Um, until then, thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. Um, maybe I'll see you again. All right. See ya.